Hello, hello, more Dimmers here and welcome back to round 6 of Magnus Carlsen Invitational 2020 and today I would like to show you the game between the best Chinese player Ding Liren. He's 27 years old and he's gonna play as white and his blitz ranking is 2788 and his opponent Hikaru Nakamura with the blitz ranking incredible 2900. It's a chess veteran 32 years old uh, and he's gonna play as black and why I am showing the blitz rankings because this gonna be Armageddon game because first four games in the match were drawn so to determine the the winner uh, we have to see the Armageddon game and Hikaru Nakamura uh, could choose he won the toes and he could choose uh, to play he's gonna play as white or as black white gonna have uh, five minutes uh, but have to win the game and black has only four minutes but draw is enough to win the game and Hikaru Nakamura he stated that he is a, a fast player and it's uh, much easier to just uh, draw as white have to risk much more uh, than black uh, so without further ado let's see what happened in this game the Ingliren opens with c4. We have e5, English opening, knight c3, knight f6, knight f3 and knight c6. So uh, four knights variation and we have g3. So fianchetto variation from the white side and here d5. Uh, we have c takes on d5, knight takes on d5 and now bishop on g2. Uh, and here is the first threat because white can pick up the e5 pawn and if it's taken uh, then win this uh, knight back and uh, that's the extra pawn for white. So black have to play knight on b6, uh, we have castle by white and now bishop on e7. We have a3 so now any jumps you know to b4 are not possible so uh, you know any tricks for example this way uh, are not possible a3 very useful move and it also prepares a b4 which is possible and then a black can fianchetto the the dark square bishop if they uh, want uh, we have castle and here d3 uh, b4 is the most popular move but ding liren play d3 so he gonna move uh, the bishop to other squares uh, we have bishop on e6 maybe preparing uh, this popular attack to exchange the light square bishop and Ding Liren continue development, so we have bishop on e3. Uh, not really natural square, but in this uh, pawn structure, you know, dragon pawn structure of Sicilian defense, actually, uh, these bishops are pretty okay as e2 pawn uh, don't need to move uh, at all for now. Uh, and here we have knight on d5. So uh, this knight on b6 is a very sad knight. He gonna stay here forever. It's not really useful, so he gonna jump to d5. Uh, we have exchange knight on d5 bishop on d5 now facing um, this bishop on g2 uh, and now queen on a4 by ding liren rook on a e8 and now rook a on c1 uh, we have a6 rook on c3 preparing to uh, double the rooks and now bishop on f6 so very sneaky idea uh, you know pretending that black gonna you know play e4 uh, but is this a serious threat ding liren says okay that's nothing serious and he play rook on d1 and who was right here uh, if e4 is played then actually uh, d takes on e4 rook takes on e4 and now this is still a threat but queen on c2 and what to do now bishop on c3 b takes on c3 and now look what white have here the knight can jump to g5 attacking the rook but also pointing at h7 okay together with the queen so and that's pretty dangerous uh, if black play something like h6 preventing that then knight can actually jump to h4 and it's good enough because now is attacking the rook uh, and also the bishop can take this okay so because it's also pinned so it's pretty dangerous position here so queen on e8 and now simply rook d5 winning the bishop uh, and white have two bishops uh, against the rook so definitely great continuation for white this is why hikaru nakamura didn't go for e4 he played a knight on d4 
threatening this fork and also putting the knight in very very nice outpost we have rook on d2 defending uh, and now uh, there is a choice so uh, black has to decide what to what to do bishop on e6 is pretty natural here probably better and this knight is pretty annoying so um, bishop on d4 e takes on d4 uh, rook have to move so c1 now c6 and black stands slightly better here don't have the problems have also the bishop pair so um, definitely uh, great for black so this was possible however uh, hikaru nakamura has a different plan and he play knight on f3 we have bishop on f3 bishop takes on f3 and now e takes on f3 creating the weakness which is not really a weakness because this pawn can be easily pushed look at this the white completely control d4 so pushing this pawn is not a problem uh, and also c5 is not possible because the rook controls c5 so can't prevent that move we have c6 and now ding liren uh, could go for d4 but he didn't go d4 e takes on d4 and now uh, if bishop takes on d4 rook e1 is possible king g2 and everything is fine with the white position uh, the game can continue however uh, Ding Liren didn't go for that because he has to win so he has to risk more he cannot play you know obvious lines which uh, makes the position easier and you know symmetrical so um, that's not good for him he play king on g2 first so now uh, if he ever decide to play d4 uh, then there are no tempo on the on the first rank uh, we have g6 so preparing to you know turtle the position now uh, for example bishop on g7 is possible and queen on e4 so dingley then still continue preparing d4 uh, and he want to avoid uh, push e4 okay if d4 uh, then ding liren don't want hikaru to, to push e4 this is why he blocked the the pawn uh, and we have bishop on g7 and here b4 blocking uh, black queen side before he start to push d4 uh, and here uh, rook e6 was probably the best for black the position is pretty pretty uh, stabilized and don't need to risk anything so for example a4 with the idea of b5 queen d7 just preventing bishop c5 would be possible uh, for example rook on d8 now uh, bishop b6 uh, rook d on e8 and how to you know make any breakout uh, as white it's very difficult black could just turtle here however uh, hikaru nakamura really wanted to play e4 um, after the d4 push so uh, he play f5 f5 is not really precise move because now uh, the king is quite vulnerable so uh, we have queen on c4 with check king h8 and yes king is safe in the h8 the problem is uh, black has now the eight rank weakness because if there are no uh, heavy pieces on the eight rank then look at this if the rook come to c8 and then this bishop blocking the king from moving so bishop would have to go to f8 and uh, white would win the, the bishop so this is some uh, issue here okay uh not really precise move and now we have d4 okay now it's everything ready uh but hikaru can of course play e4 uh but it doesn't really matter here what ding liren should play here the most precise move would be f takes on e4 and after rook takes on e4 then simply f3 rook e8 and the game can continue d5 uh, sacrificing the exchange which in this position is a really bad idea uh, to do because the bishop is actually the only defender in the position so if you have fianchetto uh, on the on the king sides or on the queen sides and the bishop defending then usually this bishop is more valuable than the rook especially if other side has the black square bishop okay because this bishop can be very dangerous if controls uh, you know dark squares and black couldn't do that so uh, definitely this bishop is uh, more valuable uh, so we would have for example c takes on d5 rook takes on d5 now queen c8 uh, exchange the pieces um, 
now now we have even the threat to take the take the rook because it's attacked twice so bishop on d2 uh queen c4 rook on c4 and this position is slightly better for white but dinkliren could probably win this uh, because now he can get to the seven rank and that could be very very dangerous and it's not so easy uh, to to uh, to defend this uh, because black actually can for example goes to g5 and if black want to stay with the rook uh, on the seventh rank then have to move to the very passive f7 and uh, white can find another targets for the rook so would be very very uncomfortable for black to play this way however ding lirin didn't go for e4 he played d5 first and now here is the problem e takes on f3 pulling the the king a uh, king of course can go to the first rank the problem is if Hikaru find a way uh, to, for example, go somehow to h3, uh, there would be some mating ideas that would be very dangerous. So enough if the, the pawn is pushed and that could be dangerous situation. This is why we have king to f3. So moving the king a uh, little bit too far. Uh, it's not the problem yet, but it's already gives some ideas to uh, to Hikaru Nakamura uh, what to play. We have queen on e7, and as you see, this could be the checkmate already, if not the queen. So Dingliren have to be careful here. Uh, and now d6 was possible, but not really the greatest because after queen on e4, king on e2, uh, and now exchanging the queens, rook a on d8, and now the pawn can be blocked and and you know j just just capture with the pieces. And if black gonna defend that, then the king also can come and uh, and that's. Uh, probably not gonna survive and if trying something like uh, d7 then simply e7 and it's even easier to win now okay because this bishop controls uh, d4 uh, the bishop also can't move here because it's it's pinned so after king on f3 just pick up this pawn and, uh, and with one extra pawn that's uh, black who's gonna probably win the game so uh, ding liren of course don't go for that he play rook c on c2 uh, we have c takes on d5, we have rook takes on d5, uh, and now rook a on d8. And it looks like a normal position in every game. However, uh, as we're gonna see, this is the critical position of the game. What to play as white? So almost every move is possible. Rook on d8 is possible. Even, uh, for example, rook c on d2 is possible. And after b5 and uh, queen on d3, Queen b7 is possible, you know, pinning this rook, uh, and and the position is quite normal. Now king on e2, unpinning, and black can play whatever, like bishop on f6, bringing extra defender here, or even uh, exchange the rook, or even uh, exchange the queen and the rook. So all of this is possible. However, here Ding Liren goes for the move which uh, every grandmaster consider um, as the first move put the king into the safety so he feel uh, quite unsafe with the king here he probably want to move uh, the queen somewhere and that would be a checkmate so what to do uh, king on g2 and it looks like pretty normal move and it would be very good move in most of the position but not this one so now feel free to pause the video and find the winning continuation for black while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So Hikaru Nakamura found this continuation and he play b5. b5 with the idea of queen on d3. This is what was played by Ding Liren. And after queen on b7, Ding Liren resigned the game. Uh, yes, he resigned because now we have this pin, we have this pin, the rook is attacked twice and if white um, try to uh, defend, for example, rook on c5, rook e5 and there is no way to bring more defenders to this rook, so um, black just gonna lose the rook and end the game. However, Alexander Grishuk found a very interesting trap, the last trap, last hope. And he said during the commentary that white actually could try queen on e4 
And this is quite bright idea. Of course, nothing would happen uh, if Hikaru Nakamura takes uh, with the Rook. Everything would be totally fine here. Rook on d8. Uh, and now Rook e8 with check. Okay, that would be just everything normal. F3 uh, with extra queen. Of course, it's winning. But what if F takes on e4? That would be disaster for black. And white would win the game. Rook on d8 and now there are no checks here, okay? Bishop f8 is the only move, so this is the weakness on the 8th rank. Uh, and now rook e5, king on g7, saving the bishop, but now rook e d5 and there is no way to stop this move, okay? So rook on d7 can come and pick up the, the queen, okay? And if queen on c6, then rook from the 5th rank to the 7th rank with the check. And uh, if king is moved here, then uh, the bishop is hanging. And if king on g8, then we have bishop c5 now winning the material and the game. Even if checkmate is coming here, so uh, doesn't really matter. If king on f6 also doesn't work, simply winning the bishop and, and of course the game. Now the bishop is defended, rook is defended and uh, you know the, the queen can't do anything here. So uh, that's of course would be winning for white. However, uh, Ding Liren didn't go for the trick and, uh, and he just resigned the game. So uh, that's all and I would like to show you the final standings after round six. Uh, so we have uh, three leaders, Hikaru Nakamura, Magnus Carlsen and Fabiano Caruana. Ding Liren, because he lost in the Armageddon, he got the one point, uh, but still have 12 points. So we already know that the seventh round uh, will not change anything. We already know final four players. But the things still can be very tricky here because uh, everybody will probably try to avoid Magnus Carlsen in the semi-final because player number one gonna play against player number four and number three against number two, okay? So uh, that is gonna be maybe exciting or maybe unexpected round with uh, strange scores and games, but we will see. Maybe it's gonna be funny, maybe... We, we, I have no idea what's gonna happen uh, if the players want to avoid Magnus Carlsen. It's possible, but I'm not saying it's uh, gonna happen. Uh, it's not gonna be easy because the game's gonna be played in the same moment, but it's still possible. Uh, and the, for the last four players, it's still something to fight because I'm gonna show you one more thing, uh, price phones, okay? So, uh, of course, players uh, fight for the $70,000 uh, to win, uh, but also look at the fifth, sixth, and seventh, and eighth place. It's still seven and a half thousand dollars, you know, difference between them. So uh, the players should also fight, you know, in the in the last four places uh, for some price. We will see today what's gonna happen. And if you like this video, press a like. If you don't like for some reason, press unlike. And if you don't want to miss any other games, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.